Cool. Well, let's go ahead and get started, guys. So I'm Dedrick Polite. Everybody knows um, me and my wife, Crystal Polite. Uh, we are excited for the call tonight with Miss Bailey, Ask Nurse Nadine, a.k.a. Um, so everybody knows, you know, we're entrepreneurs. Um, we both started our entrepreneurial journey when we were, when we were working in corporate America. Um, when we started our real estate investment company, we both had full-time corporate jobs. One of the benefits of corporate, of corporate America is uh, benefits, healthcare benefits. It's, a, it's, um, it's really part of that golden handcuffs, as I'm sure a lot of y'all know, of working a job is that you do get healthcare benefits. So that was one of the things that we were reluctant to let go of uh, besides, you know, nice incomes and nice salaries. Uh, but we were able to replace that with our business income. <coughs> but when you're married, you have two kids, um, <coughs> health insurance is very important. So, you know, that was one of our biggest concerns. And uh, we fired Crystal's boss in, what was it, June, 20, June 2018. So I kept my corporate job. We're building our business on the side. And we were able to um, fire her boss. So she left corporate. And I kept my job to keep their insurance. That was the primary reason. So I stayed at that job for another year and a half. Uh, again, working a full-time real estate investment business on the side and working a job, primarily to keep the health insurance. Um, I left my job last in January, January of this year. Um, and then at that point, we were like, and the reason I held on to it, like I said, the primary reason was to keep the insurance. So at that point, you know, Crystal was panicking. We need health insurance. You know, your, your health insurance runs out at the end of the month. So we found Miss um, Donna Bailey, a.k.a. Nurse Nadine, and she helped us navigate the whole process. And so I found Donna on a webinar she was doing. Um, and it came across my timeline <clears throat> and excuse me guys my voice is gone so if you can't hear me just put it in the chat um, but I found her um, from uh, a, a flyer that came across my timeline <coughs> literally as I was looking for it and I swear it I think Facebook or Instagram whichever one I saw you on Instagram actually maybe it reads your mind guys I swear um, <laughs> Because I was literally uh, looking up information on it. And then I saw the webinar, so I jumped on it. Um, well, it was like the next day, so I made sure I registered for it. And um, before you spoke, Donna, I had actually went to once, as soon as I got your handle on Instagram, I went and looked it up and saw that you offered a one on one and immediately scheduled the one-on-one -on -one before you ever said a word. I don't even think you were on yet. Um, it was just waiting for you for it to start. And um, I literally uh, went and paid for one-on-one -on -one consultation with you. And from the time that I spoke to Donna, just to let you guys know, and she walked me through the process of it. Um, I did everything she said. We had insurance within a week. Um, I think it was literally almost seven days to be exact. So um, it well, was before when we tried to figure it out on our own. Right. It took us months and months and we still couldn't find, right. navigate the, the health care plans. So um, she was a tremendous, tremendous help, help, help for us. Um, and the process was painless. It really, really, really was. I can't say, I mean, literally within seven days, we were, it was really seamless. So, um, I'm really excited to have her on um, to explain to you guys exactly what she explained to us. And for any of you guys thinking about it or going through that process now, this is the perfect place for you. So, so without further ado, we will hand it over to you. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Um, just to clear up the confusion, because people are like, what, what is your real name? So let me just give you all the background. <laughs> My name is Donna Nadine. And, and when I was younger, I always loved my middle name. I was like, Daddy, why did you name me Donna? Like, Nadine is so much more, you know, it just sounds so fa fabulous. And he's like, no, that's your middle name. So that's why I chose Nadine for my business name. So my first name is Donna, but it's Ask Nurse Nadine because that's my favorite name. So, and I think y'all can remember that a lot better than Ask Nurse Donna. That's what I think. But anyway, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I am actually right now working full time and doing this as my side biz. I'm a clinical training development specialist for Elder Plan Home First, and we are a Medicare Medicaid health plan in Brooklyn, New York. And I teach about insurance all the time. And sometimes people think insurance is not important. 
I've been a nurse for 30 years, guys, and I can tell you I've seen some situations that if you didn't have health insurance, it would devastate your whole life. Like, you'll be bankrupt, you will have nothing. And I think that regardless of whether you work for someone else or you're brave enough to do what many of you do, you work for yourself, you should enjoy the privileges and the comfort and the security the health insurance gives to those of us in corporate. I work for a nonprofit. Everybody deserves to have it. And so when I thought about what Ask Nurse Stain, or, ugh, let's try that again. When I thought about what Ask Nurse Nadine would be primarily about, I wanted to start off making sure I was meeting a need for an audience that most people don't really think about. You know, most people think, oh, you're an entrepreneur, you're rich, you got money, you got it going on. But I beg to differ. Um, you have more challenges than those of us that have the comfort of a nine to five. Um, and one of your biggest challenges, as you know, Dedrick has already said, was um, you don't have health insurance. So I wanna make sure that we, you know, we close that gap because it's about that time. So let me get started on my presentation. I'm gonna get to my screen and we will get started for you. So I just simply call this how to get insurance as an entrepreneur, because that's really all it's about. I wanna be very, clear in what I'm sharing with you all. If you have questions, there's going to be a time period later. If you ask me something that I do not have a definite answer for, I will make sure that the Polites get that information and you will have that information going forward. So what we're going to talk about briefly is different enrollment periods. And really that's no different than when you were on a regular job. You know how there's always a time period where you can enroll in an insurance and choose what you want to have. So we'll talk a little bit about that and how that applies to you now as entrepreneurs. Then we'll talk about the different types of insurance, and then we'll kind of bring it on home and talk about what exactly do you need. There's different insurance needs. Some people just need a single person plan. Some people need a family. Some of you have a small business, and you're also looking to insure your employees. So we want to talk about that as well. The big question on everybody's mind, how much is this going to cost? So we'll talk about what are the realistic health insurance costs and the two factors that that's basically, um, basically based on. And then we'll talk about whether or not you need an insurance broker because there's different ways after you kind of think about what you want and you look at what's out there, how are you actually going to access it? If you're a person that, you know, you're kind of savvy and you don't mind going around the internet, you might just opt to go ahead and choose something and do it yourself. You also have the option of health insurance brokers. So we'll talk about that. And I'll also let you guys know how you can get in touch with a broker in your area. So let me get this um, Zoom thing out of my way because it's about to drive me crazy. Hide the thumbnail video. Okay. So private health insurance, let's talk about that. Just want to make sure I didn't skip a slide. Sorry about that, guys. So private health insurance, which is what I'm going to focus on in the beginning. So private health insurance is really just what's going to help you cover your medical expenses, just in case you get sick um, or if you have any chronic illnesses, if there's any injuries or any conditions that you may have occur. Now, the benefit to private health insurance is that it gives you access to a whole network. So the thing about people just trying to go online and just trying to find something for themselves if you are in, enrolled in a health plan that is small, then they really don't have that many people to kind of spread the risk across. So it's important to be in a credible health insurance company where there's a huge network of doctors and hospitals that helps you because they negotiate lower rates with the insurance company. And then really what happens with that, the insurance is now just gonna keep track of all your medical payments, so you don't really have to worry about that. But the most important aspect, I believe, is that it just safeguards your way of life and your family, you know, your physical and financial well-being. A um, couple months ago, my daughter came home from school and she had this swelling on her knee. So originally I thought, well, you know, maybe she fell. So I tried to ice it and it wasn't working. And within two hours, it got bigger. I said, okay, we, we can't play around with this. So we went off to urgent care. They were closing at nine o'clock. So I get there and I have health insurance. I happen to have Cigna through my company. So I only pay $30 for a copay. So I stopped and I talked to the receptionist and I said, um, how much would this visit cost if we didn't have insurance? And she said, oh, $99 just coming in the gate. I said, oh, so what happens if you have to draw her blood and you know, they give me a prescription or what if they wanted to give me crutches? She said, oh, you would have to, um, you would have to pay all of that out of pocket. So that's why it's, it's serious, guys. And I know sometimes, you know, people have kind of been stolen because they're like, oh, you know, it's just too hard or it's too expensive. What's most important, we have to safeguard your way of life. 
because you guys are business owners. You're building a legacy for your family. We need you to be here to do that. So let's talk about how that's going to happen. First of all, how do you get um, involved in a health plan? So there's different enrollment periods. There's one that we call the open enrollment period. So very similar to when you work for an employer and um, you sign up or you make changes to your plan only during open enrollment. So you can do that through www.healthcare.gov. The open enrollment period for 2020, which is right now, um, for most states was November the 1st to December 15th of last year. And it's gonna be kind of similar for this year as well. So that's one enrollment period, but there are other ways that you can get enrolled in a health plan. I'm not gonna go through this slide because this just basically says that there are states that do have longer open enrollments, but for, this, for our purposes, since these dates are passed for these states, not gonna go through that. But here's what I want you to also know. Just in the event, of course, it's past open enrollment, so you're kind of like, okay, so what do I do? I didn't you know, get anything last year. No worries, there's another system where people can get insurance. So one of the things the government has set up is what they call special election periods. And what that is, is it just addresses the fact that life changes, right? So you can have a possible change in your household. So if you've had a change in your household in the past 60 days, including that you got married, you'll be able to pick a plan by the last day of the month and you get coverage the first day of the next month. So for instance, that would have meant if you picked a plan by February 29th, um, you would have coverage starting today, March 1st. If you have a baby, if you adopt a child, or you have a child um, in foster care, your coverage starts the day of the event. So even if you enroll in a plan up to 60 days afterwards, you would get coverage that, that day that you enroll for your plan. If your household has changed because you've gotten divorced or you're legally separated, or maybe you lost your health insurance because of the divorce or separation, um, then you would be eligible for what we call a special election period. And of course, note that if you are divorced or you're legally separated and you did not lose coverage, then it doesn't qualify you for it because you don't have the need, right? If um, you were married to someone and they died and you were on their plan, then you are no longer eligible for your current plan, which would make you eligible for this special election, just meaning again, you've had a change. There's another special election period if you change your residence. So if you move, I helped a client to obtain a health plan in December and she's moving to Atlanta actually this month. So going from North Carolina to Atlanta for her is a change in residence. So she is now eligible for a special election plan, which means that she can either, um, she can change her plan just based on the fact that she's moving to a new zip code or even a new county. So you could be in Durham, North Carolina and move to another county in North Carolina that would be a special election. If you're coming to the states from a foreign country or a US territory, that would be another qualifying factor. If you happen to be in school, so you're a student and you're moving to or from the place that you attend school, you would also be eligible after that open enrollment season. If you're a seasonal worker, so if you tend to move about, you know, from the place that you live and work, that would be another qualifier, or someone who's moving to or from a shelter or other transitional housing. Now you, you need to just know that you are of course gonna to have to prove, right? That you had qualifying health coverage for one or more days during the 60 days before your move. You don't have to provide proof if you're moving from a foreign country or a US territory. Another special election period is if you have lost your health insurance. So you might qualify for this if you or someone in your household lost qualifying health coverage in the last, in the past 60 days, or you expect to lose coverage in the next 60 days. So that was kind of one of the scenarios for um, the Polites because since um, Dedrick had come off of his job, he was now eligible. He had lost health insurance. So that opened the door for them to have a special election period, which was awesome. So coverage losses that might qualify you, you lost job-based coverage. So say you're on a job now and your job is no longer covering their staff. That right there is a special election. If you lost um, coverage for a plan of policy you bought yourself, for whatever reason, plans close all the time. I am um, I'm at my present plan because my last health plan closed down. So those things happen and the government makes allowances for that. 
if you lose your eligibility for Medicaid or CHIP, which is the Children's Health Insurance Program, if you lose your eligibility for Medicare, or if you're losing coverage through a family member who also may have had a job situation, et cetera. So lots of different time periods and reasons that you can obtain insurance. So let's talk a little bit about the different types of insurance that are available to you. So first, let's start with the individual marketplace. Uh, a good place for you to look for private health plans is on www.healthcare.gov. And they provide individual health plans and also plans for small businesses with employees. So again, since we talked about special election periods, if you do qualify for that, then you would be eligible to purchase a health plan through healthcare.gov outside of the annual enrollment period. The good thing about the plans that you're going to see listed on www.healthcare.gov is that they are plans that cover what we call the 10 essential health benefits. And that's really important. A lot of times people ask me questions about health insurance and you know, the basic question is how much does it cost? You don't wanna just go by cost and oh, my premium is low. You wanna make sure that it's gonna cover what you need. All of the health plans on healthcare.gov are in compliance with the Affordable Care Act mandate, which means that that plan has to cover everything you see listed here on the screen. You don't want to get something that's cheap. Come to find out, it doesn't pay for ER visits. ER visits are thousands of dollars just going in the gate. So you want to make sure you have things like that covered. You don't want something that, you know, they're charging you a low premium and then you land in the hospital because you got pneumonia and now you have a bill for probably 50 grand. Um, hospitalization <laughs> bills are quite expensive. If you are pregnant, you need maternity care, you need to have that covered. All of the above that you see here on the screen. So that's what's really important. Whatever health plan you get, make sure that it covers the 10 essential health benefits. Because if any of these things occur in your life, you need to make sure that it's going to be paid for. So on healthcare.gov, what they do is they use a system that they call um, metal categories. And so what's important is you have to kind of know how to pick your metal, as we say. So if you're an SCP, if you're a self-employed person, healthcare.gov, I would tell you, would be your starting point. Um, and what you need to really think about is what's your budget and what you're able to afford to pay for your health care coverage. So when it comes to picking your metal, what makes this different than, say, someone who's sitting on a job like me? You know, when you sit on a job, they basically do the picking for you and they decide how much they want to pay. And then they say, hey, we give Cigna or we do Blue Cross Blue Shield. But just because you don't have an employer health plan doesn't mean that you don't have options out there. So I need you to kind of put on a different hat with this and look at getting health insurance now as a partnership option. Because now instead of someone dictating to you that you have to have Cigna or you have to have Blue Cross Blue Shield, you can kind of pick and choose. So it's kind of like buying a car. You know, you go in there and you decide, do you want the Camry, the Corolla, or do you want the Avalon? So the metal categories are basically gonna say how you're gonna split the cost. And the cost is gonna be split between the health plan itself and you. So when we say um, splitting, we're not really talking about quality of care, we're talking about the quantity of how much the health plan is going to pay versus your cost. So let's start out talking about the bronze plans. And with a bronze plan on healthcare.gov, it's a 60-40 split. So that means the insurance is going to pay 60% of the cost, you're going to pay 40. Bronze plans are good if you're somebody who really does not expect to use regular medical services, so you're more that healthy person, um, you don't take prescription medications regularly, and you see your doctor occasionally. You know, you go like once a year for your physical or something like that. So the bronze plans will offer you the lowest monthly premium, but the highest cost when you actually need care. And your deductibles can also be in the thousands per year. That again is going to depend on whether or not you need coverage just for yourself as an individual, a family plan, et cetera. So kind of to summarize the bronze plan, this is a good option. It's a low cost means to protect yourself from like a worst case scenario. Because again, it's more geared for somebody who's really not, you know, the person that has asthma and high blood pressure and a whole bunch of other illnesses. So it's, it's good protection against, you know, what happens if I actually get really sick or there's a catastrophe. You're going to pay a low monthly premium, but you have to cover the cost of most of the routine care yourself. 
And then we have our silver plan. So the silver plan is kind of a 70-30 split. So the insurance plan is going to pay 70% of the cost. You'll pay 30%. This is a good fit if you qualify for what we call extra savings, which we're going to talk about in just a moment, or if you're willing to pay a slightly higher monthly premium than the bronze plans to cover your routine care. When we talk about routine care, we're talking about like your primary care doctor visits um, and things like that. So your silver is more like a mid-range plan. So it's a moderate monthly premium, moderate cost for care, and a lower premium. So this is good for those of you who need routine medical care, you're on prescription meds, and you can afford to pay a little bit more out of pocket for your cost. This is going to be a more mid-range in your monthly premium, but um, a higher cost for your actual medical care. Now, we mentioned with the silver plans that you might qualify for extra savings. So in the health insurance marketplace, a cost-sharing reduction is what we call an extra savings. And a cost-sharing reduction, or a CSR, is a discount that you get, and it actually lowers the amount you have to pay for your deductibles, your co-payments, and your co-insurance. So this is really, really helpful if you qualify. So this is how it kind of works. So the CSR, or your cost-sharing reduction, lowers your maximum out-of-pocket money that you're putting out for your care. And that all depends. So, you know, the scenarios can range from, you know, putting out $1,000 for the year to $6,000 for the year. It all depends on you, what your health status is, you know, the number of medications, how many doctor's visits, and all of those things. So there's no hard and fast number that I can give you for the maximum out-of-pocket. It's basically just a total that you have to pay for your covered services for the year. Once you reach that maximum out of pocket, then the insurance then takes over and covers 100% of all of your covered services. And then you also have the category known as the gold plan. The gold plan is an 80-20 split. So the insurance plan will pay 80% of your cost and you are paying 20%. This is only a good fit if you're willing and able to pay more each month to have more costs covered for medical treatment. Your gold plans have a high monthly premium a lower cost for care, and the deductibles are usually lower. So to kind of sum up your goal plan, this is good if you require frequent medical care and you need more coverage from a health plan. So this is good for someone who has, you know, a lot of illnesses, a lot of chronic illnesses going on. You know you're going to need a lot of prescriptions, and so you're going to be tapping into your health insurance a lot more often. You will have a high monthly premium, but in exchange, it'll be a lower cost for your care. And then last but not least is the platinum category, which is a 90-10 split. So your insurance plan will be paying 90% for your care. You'll pay 10%. This is good for someone who uses a lot of care. So this is for my people that are chronically ill. If you're an asthmatic, you're diabetic, you're always going to need medication. It's highly likely that you may need some care, um, you know, going to your doctor's office more often, possibly being hospitalized, and um, you have to be willing to pay a higher monthly premium. But nearly all your other costs will be covered because you paid a higher premium. So your platinum is a high monthly premium, lower cost for care, and very low deductibles. So it kind of balances out between you paying more in a premium than you having to pay so much as a deductible. Okay, so again, if you need chronic care, you know you're on a lot of meds, you have to take them on a regular basis, platinum might be something you want to look into. It does have the highest monthly premium, but the lowest cost for care. Okay, so that's your, your plans on healthcare.gov in what we call the individual marketplace. All of the metal plan categories are good in that they offer you free preventive care. So your preventive care is your annual physicals, your screenings, your mammogram, your colonoscopies, all those preventive things, and your immunizations, especially flu vaccines. I hope everybody's getting their flu vaccine because you all know the flu is serious this year. Um, so those things you definitely don't have to worry about. Those will be covered for you. There are also other selected free or discounted services that are available before you meet your deductible. And in order for you to have more information about that, when you're on healthcare.gov and you're looking into a plan, you would need to look at their um, summary of benefits, which tells you exactly what a specific insurance plan offers to you. So another question of the hour. How do you know what plan type works best for you? Well, to answer that question, we have to kind of talk a little bit about how you determine coverage. 
And one of the great things about www.healthcare.gov is that it is set up for an entrepreneur who is a solopreneur. And you can see right there on your screen, there's a section for a sole proprietor or self-employed. And then there's also what we call um, the small business health insurance. So that's your shop coverage. So that's for those of you that have a business where you have one to 50 employees and you're looking to insure your employees as well. So this is a really, really great site for you as a reference. So how do we determine your costs? Well, um, I think some of you on this call are probably realtors. So you know how they say in real estate, location, location, location. Well, when it comes to health insurance, it's income and location. So I live in New York. There's no way, <laughs> no way I'm going to get the type of um, cost that you, you that live in North Carolina are going to get. It's a different location. It's a different demographic. And so the costs are just going to be higher. Then it's also based on income. So someone who makes $40,000 a year um, versus $150,000 a year in the same state, you're going to have different rates going on because it's a combination of what you make as well as where you live. So in terms of trying to figure out how much is this going to cost me, it's income and location. So to, to talk a little bit about income levels and savings, when we talk about how to figure out cost, they're going to be looking first at the number of people in your household. So that starts with yourself. And if you're married, your spouse and anybody who's a tax dependent in 2020, even if they don't need coverage. So if you have, um, you know, a child that may be 27 years old and they have their own health plan, you still need to list them as a person in your household, but just indicate that you don't need a health plan for them. And then, of course, we talked about location. So what state do you live in? So that's very important. And then you would have to also give an estimated household income for 2020. So when it comes to the household, what you want to do is kind of do a little equation. You want to list yourself, the tax filer, your spouse, if applicable, and any tax dependents. That's how you're going to determine who is in your household. If you're a small business and you want to offer health insurance to your employees um, as a business or a nonprofit, you need to meet four requirements. Number one, you've got to have one to 50 full-time employees or FTEs. You need to offer coverage to your FTEs that work 30 hours or more. And you need to be enrolling at least 70% of the employees that you offer insurance to. You also need to have an office or an employee work site in the state in which you're getting the shop, the Small Business Health Options Program, health insurance coverage from. So those are the four qualifying requirements if you want to offer health insurance to employees. Um, that's how the small business works. So I'm going to deviate for a moment and just go to healthcare.gov and just kind of show you a little bit how to navigate there and then we're gonna come back into the presentation. So this is healthcare.gov, and if you are a solopreneur, um, you would start here to look for coverage for a small business. But since open enrollment is over, the plan looks, not, not the plan, I'm sorry, the site looks just slightly, slightly different. So you'll notice here it says, see if I can enroll or see if I can change. So remember we talked about with the special election periods, for instance, you might be moving from North Carolina to ADL. So if you're moving to Atlanta, you would click here to see um, if I can change. Or if say for instance, you know you're about to leave your job and go full-time in your business, then you would wanna go here to see if I can enroll. So let's go here. And in order to see if you can get or change your 2020 health insurance, first thing you wanna do is enter your zip code. And I'm gonna see if I remember my sisters. Oh, I do. Look at that. She's down there in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Okay, so you'd first put in your zip code and what do you want to do first? So you want to see if you qualify for a special election period. So let's do that. And then you would click here, continue. And it just lets you know this is not an application. It's just to see, do you even qualify for this? So we'll click continue. And now they ask you a series of questions. Did anyone in your household lose qualifying health coverage in the last 60 days? Just for um, example's sake, I'm gonna say yes. 
So let's say you're that person that you're about to walk away from working for corporate America, you're about to do this thing full time. Did any of the following apply to anybody in your household in the last couple of, of um, last couple, the last 60 days? Did you get married? Nope. Did you have a baby? No. Did you gain or become independent? Did you get divorced? Um, was there death? No. Did you change your primary residence? Uh, did you have a change in income? I'm going to say yes, because we're leaving our job. And did you get denied for Medicaid or the child health insurance plan? No. Gain citizenship, lawful pres residence in the U.S.? No. Were you released from incarceration? Did your employer offer to help with the cost of coverage through an individual HRA or Q? SEHRA, no. And are you a member of a federally recognized tribe or Alaska Native Corporation shareholder? No. Let's see if you qualify for a special election period. It looks like you might. Absolutely. So if you click yes to any of those, and we said immediately that you were losing, you were no longer going to be in a job and you were losing income. Okay. So that's where you at least know now that you would be eligible. And then you have the option to go from there to start or update an application. And once you do that, you have to start putting in more personal information. So I'm not going to scroll through that. Um, but what I love about healthcare.gov is it gives you the option to do some estimations before you, you know, start to kind of commit. So you can actually click here to see if you'll save. They're going to ask you for your income. And that will let you know if you would be eligible for that silver category, which would be amazing. Because when you are eligible for a silver plan, you get a discount on a premium. So let's say the premium is $800 a month. I'm just going to go on the high side. But if your savings is going to be $450, then you're paying $350 a month for a premium. So that's the kind of information that's available to you. This is a really powerful site. So again, you can go back to this site. You can kind of scan around and see the plans before you apply and get price estimates based on your income. So healthcare.gov is an amazing, amazing site. Uh, another thing that's really great, let me see if I can go back here because I want you guys to see this. So when you go back to the site, you will be able to, on your own, make a decision about whether or not you want to speak to a broker. So here at the bottom, you see it says find local help and search now. This is amazing because you can actually get help from an agent or a broker or an assister. Assisters are actually people that are trained. Um, they know all the plans on healthcare.gov and they can literally help walk you through every step of the application. That is what they do. Um, brokers are also available to you. I might be jumping a little ahead in my presentation, but I don't really care. I just want you guys to get this information. Brokers are amazing. I've actually picked up the phone and spoken to a couple of brokers. I've spoken to a broker down in North Carolina. I've called one down in Georgia just to kind of feel them out and talk to them and ask them, hey, listen, if an entrepreneur calls you um, and needs information, can you help them to fill out an application? And I was assured that that would happen. And actually my first client that I did a one-to-one -one with um, she was just having a little trouble with the site. A lot of times, you know, if there's a whole lot of people, especially in open enrollment, there's a lot of people trying to get everything in at the last minute. The site, you know, it freezes. And so she couldn't get her application. And so I got on here. I put in her zip code. I called, I called brokers until someone picked up the phone. And when I got one woman, she said to me, I'm available tonight. I can help her. And she pushed that application through and she got her insurance. I was like so excited. So this is an option. So let's just play around again. I'm going to put back in the zip code for Stone Mountain, Georgia. And we'll search. And this is exactly what you get, guys. Find someone nearby to help you apply. So now it's going to give you a list. You've got a thousand brokers that you can reach out to just in Stone Mountain, Georgia alone. You can change the location, of course, whatever state you live in. And here's the good thing. Um, brokers don't charge you for their assistance. Um, they get paid by insurance plans. What you need to do with a broker is just find out, do you have any other fees? But they can't charge you just to get their help. This is what they do. Um, they're employed by several plans, so they are salaried. Um, and say, for instance, you went on healthcare.gov and you did not meet any of the special election period qualifications. These are still people that are available to you. 
And another way that you can get help, let me go back to that um, home screen because I've done it myself because I wanted to just kind of make sure. Yes, right here. So here it says connect with us, call this 1-800 number. That's 1-800-318-2596. I'm going to write it down. So if anybody asks me later in the chat, I will have it available. 1-800-318-2596. Why is this important? Because this is a general number where you can just call and ask questions. I mean, general questions. So if you're concerned about you know, how to figure out which one of the four categories is good for you, or if, say, you've kind of searched around and you, you don't think that you're going to qualify, this is a great number. These guys are so, so helpful. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting up here in New York, and I call them and I ask questions about people in different states, and I have never, ever not gotten the answers that I need. So I want you guys to make sure that you go back to healthcare.gov. It's a great, great starting point. Even if you don't qualify for one of those special elections, you can still at least get your questions answered and get the right help that you need. So let's see if it's going to behave itself and allow me to go back to my PowerPoint. Yes, it did. Woohoo. Okay. Come on now, thing. This is what happened the last time. Okay. I'm going to come out of the PowerPoint. Y'all forgive me. But I'm going to have to do that in order to order to um okay thank you very much awesome so that was the individual marketplace and how you can kind of navigate around healthcare.gov let's talk a little bit about private individual plans so you also have hmos or health maintenance organizations the thing about an hmo is that it um you know the big push is that we have lower cost i actually work for an hmo so it's all about making sure that people's premiums are more affordable and we either have low deductibles or no deductibles. The thing about an HMO is that you're going to be restricted to a provider network. So that means if you already have, you know, a set of doctors that you're kind of tied into for yourself, for your family, if they are not participating physicians in the HMO that you choose, you would literally have to give them up and be willing to start over with some new doctors. So if that's something that is feasible for you, an HMO would be something that you could consider. Then you also have what we call PPOs, or Preferred Provider Organizations. They're a little bit more flexible than an HMO. So you still do have a provider network. I have Cigna, and I'm actually Cigna PPO. But the thing is that you will also be covered for out-of-network services just at a higher cost. So I could totally go to a different ophthalmologist. I just have to pay a little bit more. You don't have to select a primary care physician and you don't need a referral for a specialist, which is great. So if anything happens and your health status changes and your doctor just wants you to run to a dermatologist, no worries, he can just give you a prescription or a name. And if you're in a PPO plan, you can just go right ahead, make an appointment and get seen. You're also in a PPO, you always end up spending less if you see somebody who's an in-network specialist. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. And then you have your point of service or your POS plans. So in a POS plan, usually, but not always, you may be required to choose a primary care physician. Again, another way to make sure you get very specific answers when it comes to picking a health plan, you, got, you have to make sure that you read through their summary of benefits because that will tell you specifically, I cover the emergency room, I cover an ambulance, I cover um, you know, different types of tests like a CAT scan and MRI. It will literally tell you that. And it will also tell you whether or not you have to have a primary care physician in their network. What's good about a POS is that they coordinate your care and they make referrals to specialists, which is really the best way to get your care. You always want to make sure that your doctors are connected. You want the right hand to always know what the left hand is doing. Your preventive care benefits are included, so that's your annual physical, all of your um, uh, screening tests, your colonoscopies, all that kind of stuff, and your immunizations. Very, very important stuff. This plan, of course, offers you a little bit more flexibility, so you can go outside of your network, just know that you have to be willing to pay more. Sometimes it's worth it. And your EPO is the exclusive provider organization. So that's a plan that requires you to use doctors and hospitals in the network. The only exception is emergency care. Because reasonably speaking, of course, we can't plan for that. So you never want to be in a situation where you can't go someplace because, you know, they, they don't cover that particular hospital's emergency care. 
here's the thing. Um, unlike an HMO, you don't have to select a primary care physician, and you also don't need a referral for a specialist for an EPO plan. If you go to a doctor outside the network, however, and I think that kind of speaks to the name, right, because it's called exclusive, you go outside of the network, 100% of the cost is on you. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then, of course, there is government health insurance. And we have two plans. We have Medicare, which provides health insurance coverage for someone who's 65 and older, if you're under 65 and you have a disability, or you have end-stage renal disease. So that's anybody who's on dialysis, or if you're eligible for a kidney transplant, you would also be eligible for Medicare. Here's the thing about Medicare that a lot of people don't understand, and I literally didn't understand it until about 10 years ago when I started working for Medicare HMOs. And it's not like a traditional private insurance. You know, when we get insurance working for an employer, um, technically it will cover your medical, your dental, your vision. But Medicare is not an uh, all-in-one. Medicare does not cover everything. It covers medical services. There's no dental. There's no vision. And I remember when my mom and dad, who are now retired nurses, um, my mom especially, she worked longer. She worked past 70 because she needed quite a bit of dental work. And she knew that if she enrolled in Medicare, she wasn't going to get any of that covered. So she literally worked an extra year and a few months just to hold on to her insurance to cover her dental. So a lot of people do not understand that. That's really important. For those of you that may have family members that are in one of these categories, you know, that's something that they need to understand. Medicare HMOs, however, do offer more coverage of services within a network. So my company in particular, we, we cover dental and vision because we realize when people are older, you know, those are things you need. So we, we kind of threw that in um, and it's kind of like, you know, the icing on the cake and it, it makes people want to enroll basically. And then you have Medicaid, which is your other government um, health plan. And what this does is it focuses on people who are low income. So if you're eligible, low income adult, children, pregnant women, elderly adults, and people with disabilities. And when Medicaid says low income, they mean really low income. Like one family, one person in a family, the income is like $8,000 a year. So they're really not playing when they say low income. But these are all different options for different types of insurance. So let's talk a little bit more specifically about what you yourself as an individual and an entrepreneur are looking for. What are your insurance needs? So this is what you need to think about. Um, now that we kind of talked a little bit about different places that you can look at for insurance, the different types of insurance plans that are out there, you have to think about what you need. So are you looking for an individual plan, a family plan? Are you looking for that small business health insurance? Do you want medical, you know, with the whole kit and caboodle? Do you want the dental, the vision? And then we can't leave out pharmacy because if you are on prescriptions, you definitely need a plan that covers your pharmacy. So let's talk a little bit about costs based on what you think you actually will need. So a couple of important points. There are, in some limited cases, insurance companies that sell private plans outside open enrollment, and they actually count as qualifying health coverage, which means that they're going to cover those 10 essential areas that we talked about a little bit earlier. So these plans will meet all those requirements of the healthcare law, which includes that they cover pre-existing conditions. That's huge, guys, because you don't want to have a plan that, you know, sounds perfect and you're not paying a lot. And then as soon as they find out that you have, you know, like myself, I have a thyroid condition. I have hypothyroidism. So my thyroid is a little underactive. The minute they find out I had that before I joined the plan, now they want to tell you, oh, no, we don't cover that. You have to make sure. That's the purpose of you having insurance is to have your condition covered. So you want to make sure your plan covers that. You want to make sure it provides the free preventive care and that they're not capping your annual benefits, which means after they paid a certain amount, they want to cut you off and say, no, you know, you're tapped out. You know, we only do up to 50000 and you're past that, so we can no longer cover you. So insurance companies can tell you if a particular plan counts as what we call minimum essential coverage. And what's important, I mentioned this before, is the summary of benefits. That is like your insurance mini Bible, literally. It will summarize the basic um, services that the insurance covers. And that, that information is really what you should base picking your plan on. Don't just base it on the premium. 
It's more important what exactly am I getting out of this? So in, in terms of how you're going to make your choices and where you can make some comparisons, yes, healthcare.gov is a great starting point, but you can also compare plans at other sites. There's um, ehealthinsurance.com, there's healthpocket.com, and you can find your health insurance brokers through healthcare.gov's local help finder, which I showed you a little bit earlier on the healthcare.gov site. So um, another question that people always say to me is, you know, they're kind of worried about the fact that, oh my goodness, you know, I didn't get insurance during open enrollment. Am I going to have this huge penalty when I try to apply for something? And the answer to that is no. Um, from the research that I've done after 2018 coverage year, the individual mandate penalty repeal went into effect. So a lot of people didn't know about the repeal, but they didn't know about the penalty. So what does that mean? You don't have to pay a penalty on the taxes that you file from 2020, even if you did not have qualifying health insurance in 2019. So they kind of have given a little grace there, which is amazing. Um, Self-employed people who qualify are allowed to deduct 100% of your health insurance premium. And that includes your dental, your long-term care coverage, for yourself, for your spouse, for your dependents. And that deduction only applies to your federal, your state, and your local income tax. This does not apply to your self-employment taxes. So another excellent resource that I found for entrepreneurs is um, NASE. That's the National Association for the Self-Employed. The NASE offers entrepreneurs and small business owners a really wide range of resources and tools. I mean, it supports you in many other ways because health insurance is a great need as, as a business owner, but there's other resources you need as well. And this kind of is like a one-stop shop. So the thing about the NASC is because it has consolidated buying power because of the thousands of people that are a part of it, it helps you to cut your cost on many products and services such as health insurance plans. So you can get a plan where you have your major medical, your prescription, and your dental and your vision. And the website for NASE is www.nase.org. So when it comes to estimated cost, there's some data that was gathered by eHealth, and the average health insurance cost for single coverage premiums in 2018 was $440 a month. For family coverage, the cost for premiums was $1,168 a month. Again, let's keep in mind, costs are gonna vary based on income and location. So we can't give you a black and white number because every last one of you on this webinar, your cost is gonna be different based on your income and your location. Do you need a broker? So that's, um, that's something to consider. I personally am just the type of person, um, I really don't want to be bothered with a lot of applications and paperwork. And if I can get someone to help me, you know, just kind of shoot something through, I would do it. If you're like me, brokers might be the way to go. If you're a go-getter and you don't mind dealing with this stuff, go for it. I admire you. I don't want anything to do with it. So I personally would be the person that um, gets a broker. So we kind of went through this. So instead of taking the time to um, go through the video, I, I literally did a navigation and showed you all what to do on healthcare.gov. So again, it's just putting in, you know, find local help, put in your zip code, and it will bring you to this site here. And once you get to this site, you can just go through that list. What I did is I um, called people first or text and whoever responded first, you know, then that's who you can get your, your help from. And here is another website that I thought was quite helpful healthcoverageguide.org. And this had a nice listing of different sites you can go to to purchase health insurance online. So the, it's kind of like, you know, the creme de la creme is the healthcare.gov. That's the first thing that's listed. And then the e-health insurance. And then here are several private insurance companies. So now that it's actually um, outside of open enrollment, I want to say it's going to be easier for you to be able to go to a private health insurance website and get information. I was doing some navigating in like say mid-July and what the government was literally doing is if you went to Blue Cross Blue Shield, there was a link on the site that would make you go back to healthcare.gov because they wanted people to go to healthcare.gov first until the end of open enrollment. But now that we're outside of that period, it'll be easier for you and you can go to a regular, you know, Cigna, 
Blue Cross Blue Shield or any of these sites, and you can look and see if this is something that would work for you. So I'm gonna open the floor for any questions. And if it's something I need to do some research, I've already promised that I will make sure that I get the information back to the polites so you all get accurate information. Uh, Nadine, thank you so much. That was very informative. Guys, I know that was a lot of information, but I'm sure y'all have questions, so don't be shy. Uh, you can put your questions in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask your question. So who's gonna ask the first question? And another thing too, Nadine, we were actually able to um, get health insurance and dental insurance. So with our, we ended up with Blue Cross Blue Shield, okay. or just so you guys know, Blue Cross Blue Shield, family of five. Um, we were eligible for, I forgot what it was that you called it again, that- um, The special election? Yeah, no, 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 was it some type of a, a credit Oh, okay. So you got the, um, oh, why is the name trying to escape me now? Uh, the cost saving reductions. Yeah, I think that might've been it. Um, mm -hmm. and so we were, we got Blue Cross Blue Shield for a family of five for, wow. I think it's two, two, 15 a month. Yeah. Okay. Two fifteen a month. Two fifteen a month. And it was like the gold package. Yeah, we thought the premium was going to be a lot higher. That was one of our primary concerns, but um, actually was very reasonable. Yeah, um, yeah. And we and it actually came with um, dental for mm -hmm. our two youngest. Oh wow, excellent! And um, then he enrolled I didn't us. Know that. Yeah, oh, their cool. their dental <laughs> is included in it. And, and our dental just, is separate. And our dental is separate. The three oldest, my oldest, and then me and uh, my husband. Um, Got to go into Q&A, too. Uh, Tamara in the Q&A said, how long does it take for the coverage to take effect? So it depends on when you are applying. Um, generally, what happens is, say, for instance, now we're in the beginning of March. So if you qualify for one of those special elections and you go to healthcare.gov, if you give them all the information that they need, you should have coverage within the next couple of weeks. And I, I want to say that's on the long side. Yep, that's how long it, it yeah, literally literally took, took a week us, for uh, us to get ours. A week to get ours, yep. Mm -hmm. um, Ebony asks, how are the premiums deducted on the tax return? Um, also, is there a vast difference in premium prices or is there a range? premiums deducted on tax returns. That I don't know much about. Um, I'm going to actually speak to my accountant. He would know that like really, really well because um, I don't know much about that side so deducted on taxes. And is there a range? What was the other part of the question? Is there a vast difference in premium prices or is there a range? There's a range and it again, it depends on which type of plan you choose and then it depends on if you're looking to get the plan as an individual, or are you covering a family? Is that a family of two? You and a child, you and a spouse, you and three children. So it, it all depends on the family, the household size, and the income and the location. So yes, it's definitely a range, Ebony, on the premiums. Yeah, and just I will, to add to that. Check um, the premium deduction on taxes with an accountant so I can get you a good solid answer. Yeah, we saw there was a big range based on the plan, like you said, and how many people's covered. Mm -hmm. So we saw the low end from a couple hundred, which, which is what we got, to in the thousands. Right. So yeah. there's definitely a wide range. Uh, Stephanie has a question, set, Stephanie Williams. So being that open enrollment is over, what options do you suggest? We do not qualify for special elections. Okay. So one of the things that is that you can do is consider private health insurance. So now that that time period is over, when you go to a website like um, the eHealth Insurance or you go to Cigna.com or Blue Cross Blue Shield, there's always a section for um, a business owner or someone who is um, solo, they either call you a solopreneur or self-employed. 
and they have individual plans that are set up for you. So you can click there and see if any of those options are working for you. Um, again, what I would suggest, even if you don't you know, qualify for any of the special elections, I would still go back to healthcare.gov and call that 1-800 number just to ask them a series of questions because that's what I was kind of doing in doing some research to get answers for people who haven't moved, haven't had a change in household, et cetera. What do you do from now until October? So they, they pretty much told me to just kind of wait until the open enrollment was done, which I did. And then they said, it's better for you to just go through a private health plan through their website or go to um, nasc.org. Because what they have been able to do is because they have the power of numbers, there's so many entrepreneurs that are a part of that. They're able to kind of use the thousands that are in NASC, almost like a company saying, oh, I have 3,000 staff. So you're going to get group. much better. The right. Group the, group, power. the group rate. So by doing that through NASC, you can get the Blue Cross. You can get your Cigna. You can get many of the private health plans that they offer, but you're getting it at that group discount rate. So it's almost like you're getting it through an employer. So um, you can do that. Um, okay. Um, and see if John, that, that's something that works. John has a question. He's asking, on average, is the cost for small business insurance less um, or comparable to COBRA? Oof. Oh, gosh. Less. Um, I'll share a quick story with you. I was laid off five and a half years ago. And um, fortunately, in that first set of layoffs, they actually offered us COBRA for three months. And um, I was getting some, you know, some correspondence in between there and COBRA was billing me. Well, what they were going to bill me, John, was going to be $2,200 a month for a family plan, myself, my husband, and my child. Um, <laughs> and what you get as an entrepreneur, you're not paying that type of money. You're paying much less. Even if you're paying... 1100 it's way better than $2,200 a month. I thought that was overwhelming. And my company was paying that for me. Had they not put that into our, um, what do you call it? The, the severance package, yeah. I would have had to pay that myself because my new job was not going to cover me for three months. So yes, yeah, we, we pay much less. <laughs> we, found, we found the same exact thing. When they sent us the COBRA, we had already gotten our own yeah. self-employed insurance, you know, with your help and the broker's help. But the COBRA insurance premium was like over 2000 a month versus 200 which is what we ended up paying. COBRA is insane. The thing about COBRA um, is that when you have an employer plan, what, what I've learned is that, you know, say, for instance, like I have a family plan. And right now I'm paying, what am I paying for a family plan? I'm paying about 400 a month for the three of us. And it's not that the insurance is 400 a month. It's that that's the share that I have to cover my company pays the bulk of it, right? And so what happens with COBRA is you're seeing both sides come together. So the number is huge. The number is always huge. It's just that it's all about how is it balanced out? Is it 70-30? Is it, you know, 80-20? So that, that's where you see a difference when now you have to shop around for a plan. So what you have to do is be savvy with it and make sure that you're going through a network that's so big, you still pay a small share. Thank you for answering that. Uh, Christine has a question. She says, if I'm a very healthy person, I eat pretty good, exercise regularly, but I've had a broken ankle, would I automatically be disqualified for certain packages? Um, no, not, not really. I think, again, if you, if you were to start out looking at healthcare.gov, remember what, what you guys really need to focus on is not so much the cost. Let's, let's not even put the cost in the equation right now, what I want you to think about is, think about yourself going to a resort. So you know when you go to a resort, you're looking for a package, right? And in the package is what do you want to do? Are you going to go scuba diving? Do you want to do helicopter rides? What is it that you're looking for? So for you, you're saying, I don't need um, prescription coverage necessarily. So you don't need that in your resort package. What you need is medical. Um, and you don't need high medical. You just need more like, what was the first plan we talked about? I believe it was the bronze where um, it's more like kind of just you want to make sure in case something happens, like a broken ankle, you know, like a sprain, you're covered. You're not somebody that needs, you know, prescriptions every month. You don't have to go to the doctor every two to three months to follow up because you're, you're pretty good. 
So you're not, it's not that you'd be disqualified, it's that you don't need it, which is a good thing. You're not someone that, you know, is on a lot of prescriptions. You need a bunch of medical care. You're forever going back for another CAT scan and x-ray. You're not that person. So you're not um, disqualified. You just don't need it. So I want you to, to look, up, look really for what it is that you need. And if you don't need a whole package, if you don't need the XLE, then go ahead and get the standard edition. It's what works for you. Great. Um, Mech has a question. Her question is, is health insurance the same regarding an adult child dependent? Um, what would be the, okay, so when you say an adult child dependent, you're talking about a child under 26, because I believe you're covered, they're covered up to 26. Yeah. With child in quotes. So. Yeah, because we have, that's the same thing. Good question, because I had asked our broker that as well, because I didn't know if we could still cover him. Mm -hmm. He was 19 and he said, yeah, he's able to stay on your insurance until I think it was 26. Yep. Yep. Yeah. They, they put that allowance in there because, you know, they know also people are staying at home longer and also sometimes people are in college a little bit longer. College longer. That's what he said. Yep. <clears throat> so that's great. Um, yes. If they're up to 26, then they, they could be a covered quote unquote child on your policy. All right. John's question is as a small business owner, if you have employees working remotely away from the office, will the overall plan costs be adjusted based on different locations? Oh, wow. That, that's a good one. And I'm not sure. So I'm going to write that down and I'm going to check that out with the healthcare.gov experts. Because with remote, now you're talking about, wow. So say, for instance, and I'm just going to throw a number out there. Say you have 40 people working for you, but you've got some in New York, some in Virginia, some elsewhere. So um, not sure how they would do rates, et cetera, for that. So let me ask about that remote workers. And we're not covering our employees at this point. We just started with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, as our business grows, we do have employees, but as it grows, we may provide mm -hmm. coverage somewhere down the road. So right. John, I don't know, you know how many employees you have right now, but if you just start out, uh, it's just you and your wife, I wouldn't you know, if you have VAs or something like that, you wouldn't want to be provided health care for them. It's just two. So, yeah, I wouldn't really worry about that for right now. I'd worry about covering you and your spouse. Mm -hmm. And then down the road, um, that's something you may want to consider. Now, I know for me, um, for my last corporate job, um, I did work. Originally, we started out, we were in Massachusetts which is where uh, my company is. And then I, we moved here to North Carolina and I started to work remotely. Mm -hmm. So my insurance did switch. <clears throat> um, and it switched from, um, I was still on Blue Cross Blue Shield mm -hmm. um, of Massachusetts, but my, my policy switched coming into North Carolina. Right, and, and that I makes sense. Say that again? That makes sense, because now that you said that, in, in answer to his question, I think what I would say is that what they'd have to do, like if I live in Virginia, then you have to give me a plan in Virginia. Yes. So I'm Blue Cross in Virginia. Virginia. Yep. You know? yeah. And um, that's one of the things that our broker had asked us about our employees as well, mm -hmm. um, because we do, like we said, we have some and some are remote. Right. Um, and one of the things he went over with us, even though I told him we're not going to cover them at this moment, Mm -hmm. but we will eventually offer it um, was okay. He said, just keep it in mind, you know, depending on what state they are in, they'll still be covered by you, but their insurance will be an insurance comparable to that state, um, right. the state that they are in. So if you have blue cross blue shield, like we have, mm -hmm. um, and we have one of our employees in uh, Massachusetts, it'll, you know, be a blue cross blue shield policy for Massachusetts. Um, but the fees will also be different. So like she said, her fee in North Carolina is going to be in New York is completely different from what we would pay here in um, North Carolina. So when I left Massachusetts, what I was paying there was a lot more than what I ended up having to pay when we moved to North Carolina. Okay, right. Of course. Okay. Uh, Ebony has a dental insurance question. Uh, she said, Crystal mentioned separate dental for her and Dedrick. How do we enroll in separate dental if needed? Also, is it the same for vision? Um, for us, it was. So he just mentioned, um, I asked him about dental and vision. 
And since we weren't covered with the Blue Cross plan, he said, yeah, it'll, um, he still gave us the um, company, the which broker, is right? the broker, still gave us who we would go through, which was Guardian. Um, which a lot of big companies that provide. But, yeah. yeah. So for our state, it was Guardian Dental. Um, and it was, it was, they're really enrolled. Um, he enrolled at the exact same time. As the health insurance. Um, as the health insurance. It, gi it gives you a quote for both. So he gave his quote for both at the exact same time because they came up at the same time. Um, same thing for vision. It was lumped in with the dental, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And then he also said, you know, for vision, he was like, listen, you may have a, uh, it may be easier or cheaper if you go to um, the, I think it was like a vision center or eye center and get your um, vision check there than it would be to pay monthly. So he gave us both of those options. <laughs> and the dental was very reasonable as well. I was surprised. Yep. It was like 25 bucks yep, or 50 20, bucks a month. Yep, something like 27 bucks a month for family. a month for a family of three because there's three of us on um, the dental. And we can always add the two younger ones on our dental as well. Um, and they can literally be covered by both, he said. Um, if we find, come to find out that, you know, the Blue Cross Blue Shield, if it wasn't covering enough. That's great. And it great. tends to not be too expensive. And one thing I remember about healthcare.gov, just to share on the dental, when you're searching, say, for instance, you pick um, a gold plan. And what you do is as you pick a plan, you can expand it and it'll show you everything mm -hmm. it covers. And you'll notice it says adult dental and, and some of them say child dental. So say, for instance, yeah. you're thinking about picking a plan and you don't see child dental, I would kind of just pause break and just speak to a broker and just see, is that a possibility or do I need to be considering a different plan? Because there's so many on there that I, I think there's, there's enough kind of to go around, you know, as yeah. long as you meet the requirements for the actual enrollment time period. And, and guys, for those of you that actually don't have insurance right now and you don't meet the special election period, I don't want you to be discouraged. There's, there's just so much that's out there. Um, and that's, that's my purpose. I mean, that's why I'm here. Um, you can either, you know, you can talk to me one-on-one -on -one and I'll help you as much as I can. Um, what I tend to do with my one-on-ones is, you know, when, when I get in touch with you, I send you a form before. So you tell me what you're looking for. I'll do the background research. Then when I'm on that video with you, I'm basically just telling you what I found. So we're not like taking time and trying to figure it out. I'm letting you know, this is what I found. These are the options. I spoke to a broker. I was told this, that, or the third. And I also have other classes that I'm in development. I'll be honest with y'all. I didn't get to finish my website this week. I'm still working on it. It'll be up in a little bit. And I'm going to have more available for entrepreneurs. So, you know, there'll be a course on Medicare because guess what? Sometimes people are younger, they're disabled, and they're working for themselves too. Yep. They're doing things. Or, you know, you may have family members that, you know, they're starting to think about retirement. I want them to kind of know what that really means, <laughs> what it really looks like. So, you know, I'm here to help. That, that's what I'm here for. Um, so if you guys do a, a little website search and you feel like you're not getting what you need, come on back and just, you know, have a little chat with me. and We'll see what we can do to, to make sure you get the information that you need. And one of the great things that um, Nadine also did for us guys was she showed us, like she said, I sent her my information ahead of time. So when we jumped on the call, she literally walked me through the steps that I was going to do um, to start the process and showed me exactly how to look for a policy that would allow me to keep my same primary, um, my uh, primary care physicians for us for like me my husband and our kids so when picking that policy i was able to go in to see if that policy covered um if that insurance covered my um or was accepted by my primary yeah if it was in network, network with our primary so that was like really really great <coughs> for me <Excuse> and <laughs> for anyone who you know who has had their um, primary for some time or really comfortable with it. That's also something that she showed me how to do. So it was amazing. I'm telling you that one-on-one was um, literally, she walked me through the steps and she, then she sent me the recording. So the next day I went back on the recording and I literally just did it step by step. Boom, 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 boom. 
You relieved a lot of stress because she was stressed about yes. health insurance. She was stressing me out. So thank you, Nikki. <laughs> he, he wasn't stressed. Well, <laughs> I helped. He wasn't stressed. You know, I was like, all right, we'll get health insurance. That you know how him. men are when it comes to he the was doctor. Like, <laughs> I was shutting down. Like, listen, I'm not working on that today. I'm working on health care. That's it. Um, oh, no. And oh, I just literally no stress. followed no stress, your guys. Mm-mm. It isn't. I'm telling you, like, your process and when you sent me the recording, that's all I did. I pulled the recording up and I went step by step and I was on the phone with uh, a broker. I'd actually called like three of them mm-hmm. from that list um, and got on the phone with one. Just so happened he literally lives like three doors down from us. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> and wow. now he emails me like, hey, I found you guys YouTube channel. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he lives on our street. It's Literally, like doors. three doors down from us. Um, but if you guys get a chance, tell people where they can find you at, Nadine. Yeah, email, <laughs> contact okay. information. Okay, so guys, um, my handle on Instagram is Ask Nurse Nadine. And I'll be very honest with you all. Like I said, I didn't get that website up. That was my goal. I wanted it ready before March 1st and didn't happen. But no worries. I do have a link in my bio. Right now, I have another health insurance class that I do. It's called Health Insurance 101 for Entrepreneurs, which has a slightly different focus. What I do there is I kind of explain a little bit more about private insurance versus employer insurance and why it's important to understand how now you need to make a choice for yourself about what you have. And to me, honestly, it opens up more options. I interviewed for a job once where I remember I didn't want to take the job because I didn't like the insurance. That was more important to me, you know, I to have the that. right insurance than to just have this great job. So yeah. I kind of, you know, said no thanks and just kept looking until I could find some place that had Blue Cross Blue Shield because I did not want the HMO that they had. That Blue Cross Blue Shield. Right. That is that is like the goat. I mean, I have Cigna right now, which is also good, but Cigna's not Blue bad, Blue yeah. is, that's the thing. I mean, they just offer such comprehensive, you know, um, coverage. Right. And that's you, don't, important. you don't want that no name like. Kroger's health plan, like <laughs> you've never heard of. That's why you got to really search on a credible website, you know, like healthcare.gov or go to a real private insurance, um, you know, website or ehealthinsurance.com or NASE. So I took the time to kind of research because trust me, I found a couple of sites where what, what happens is, is they want you to immediately give your email. Those are the worst because then you just get a million people emailing you and then they start texting you and it gets very frustrating. And what right. their whole goal is, I just need my commission, just sign up. Meanwhile, you don't get the dental that you need. You don't get what you need. Um, I do offer one-on-ones and because it's leap year, we're going to do a little leap year special. So if you register by March 9th, instead of $39 for the 30 minute session, it'll be $30 and you do get the replay. So I will send you in less than 24 hours because I usually get it back real quick and I want you to have it. I send you that replay so you don't have to sit there and take notes and try to worry about what steps do I take? You just look at the video and then you can go on and you can do what you need to do and get yourself and get your families covered. That is a no brainer. We would have paid a lot more for the help, but no, the value is definitely there. Uh, a few other questions popped up in the so, chat. One of the questions, I'm going to take this. Uh, Janine had asked, how does the service Nadine offer differ from that of what a broker or a sister does? And I'll just give you my, my experience with her. <coughs> Excuse my voice, guys. Um, what I saw that happened was, so me and Nadine, I sent her the information over that she requested. Um, she had done the research. So when we got on the phone... And we got on um, healthcare.gov. She pulled the site up. She literally plugged away all my information that she needed. And she recorded the session. So she walked me through it. We looked, made sure that the, um, the, the packages, um, the coverage was, you know, my, it was covered by, it was accepted by my primaries, things of that nature. So, um, Put everything back up. So I was able to um, take that information, put it back in to put it back into the screen. I um, put it back into um, my computer. I plugged away at it. So from that point, I had ended up calling the broker that she had literally everything that you had pulled up 
was um, to a T. So when I contacted the broker um, and gave him my information, said, hey, I'm looking for this, he had actually came back with the most off the wall expensive policies. So I said, no, because then you're, when you pulled it up, it also showed that we qualified for that, um, the price reduction or, or something. Cost sharing. Mm -hmm. Cost, right. Cost sharing. And so I went back to him, I said, no, we should qualify for this. And he was like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that now. Yeah, you're right. And then I, he had asked me um, something about, you know, the, po the ones that he had. I said, well, wait, um, those are not what I'm looking at on my screen. And he sent me over his, the quotes were like the four. I said, um, these aren't even comparable. They're not accepting my primary. I said, I need this one and this one and this one that had pulled up. So he actually went back and sent me back those same quotes. And he was like, oh, okay, yep, yep, I see those. Those were at the top. Um, and then we had a bunch of, you know, ones that was less than the 215 that we pay as well um, that just didn't offer anything that we would have needed for <coughs> us. But I like the fact that I was already aware of what I qualified for before I talked to the broker. Because, you know, everybody needs checks and balances, Janine. You know, and I'm, I'm the one to check you if I got to. You know, I ain't got a problem with that. But that's really what I liked about your service is it informed me in an area that I had no knowledge of prior to. So that was my take on how your service differed from um, a broker a broker or an, a sister. Um, but you can chime in too, Donna. Sure. Um, and another thing um, that's different about what I do, I don't actually sit down and help anybody to fill out an application. I think what's most important, my mantra in life is that knowledge is power. So, you know, it's kind of like, um, I'll date myself a little bit, but it's okay. There used to be a store called Sims. I love their commercial. And the commercial used to say, an educated consumer is our best customer. Loved it. And that's what I want for you all. I want you to be educated in something that's not your specialty. My specialty is health and health insurance because I've been doing this a very long time. And so I'm, I'm, pretty well versed in what goes on in the health insurance industry, whether it's Medicare, Medicaid, which is what I do all day, or the private sector. Um, so what I do is I help you to get the information you need so you know what's out there, as opposed to going to a car dealership where they only want to send you, they only want to sell you the $80,000 model, where you need to also know that there's a $65,000 model right. that's going to give you what you want. Right. So I offer you the entire showroom Yes. Whereas if you tap into a broker, remember, they get paid by insurance companies. Yes. So if I can sell you the plan with the highest premium, you know, I'm going to get something out of that. I'm not concerned with that because I'm not getting paid by insurance companies. Right. I'm right. concerned with you knowing these are your four options. You're not locked in and you need to make sure that this is what you need to get. After that, now you can pick up the phone and go, hey, you know what? I don't feel like dealing with an application broker. Can you help me? A sister? Can you help me? And so they kind of, you know, I kind of pass the baton on to them. So I educate my consumer. You become a better customer. You go to them and you say, hey, can you just help me kind of push this application through? And without, without you know, kind of being blind or ignorant where you don't know that you can actually get a plan where the premium is not $1,200 a month. Right. You need to be able to, just like you said, you need to be able to check them and go, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> And that's, what one, he, that's, that's literally what he presented us with, with all these platinum packages. Right, of course. Oh, I forgot to mention the lower cost ones. Yes. So good thing we had Nadine in our corner. I'm telling you. Yep. So we got a question from Angela. Uh, this is actually Angelina. a question. Angelina, a uh, question that I had. Uh, she's asking, when looking at income to qualify, which income does healthcare.gov look at? Your gross income, your adjusted gross income, or your taxable income? Gross, adjusted, or your taxable? Um, I think they're looking for, I'm, I may not be saying the right word, so I'm just going to say your total, right? So if, say, my total income is uh, $110,000, because I know the first person I did a one-to-one -one with, she gave them what her total was. So I'll just say, for instance, she told them it was $50,000, right? She didn't subtract <laughs> it from it. She gave them that as a blanket number. And it actually worked for her. And she also has an adult child, because I know someone else had that scenario 
who, who actually didn't need coverage, but she gave them her complete income, which was $50,000 for the year. And they worked with that. So complete so, income, that, that's usually uh, gross. So that's that what they asked us time. for with our gross. I always um, get that mixed income. up. Yeah, that's what they asked us for was gross as well. Yeah. Right. And it's better, guys, to give them, you know, give them the total number because they 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 can't make, they can't give you the right help unless they know what you're really working with. You know, like I had one person, um, she lives in New York. She had a different scenario because the location is different. And so when she told them that as a solopreneur, she makes, she made $150,000 last year, you know, of course they gave her a scenario that was much higher than what you all are going to get down in the South. But it was important for her to be honest with them and say, this is what I made um, last year. And they had to work with that. So she had to make some decisions about whether or not, you know, she could do it, et cetera, et cetera. But give them, give them your gross. I wouldn't give them anything else. And then from there, you could ask the broker a question like, well, this was my gross, but this was my taxable, or this was my adjusted. How does that impact my premium, et cetera? And then they can answer those questions for you. And another thing that, you know, our broker had informed us of, because he asked for our estimated gross um, mm -hmm. for this upcoming year, and we gave him that. Now we did, we were very clear with, you know, well, what is to happen if we go over that? And he said, well, if you know that you're coming up to it, um, give me a call or an email prior to you getting to it. If and your income is higher. If your income is going to go higher, exceed it, and then we can make adjustments then so you don't have to worry about paying um, the government back a lot of money at the end of the year because, you know, you said your gross was 100000 and then you made four hundred or 300000 He mm -hmm. said, so we can make that adjustment before – um, you go over it. <clears throat> so um, you don't have to worry about it come to end. So always keep that in mind because that's an option too. Good stuff. Any final questions for Nurse Nadine? Uh, as far as contact information, um, is there a good email they can reach you at? Yes. Uh, we'll I apologize. I should have had that on the screen. It's Nadine at asknursenadine.com. Let me say that again. It's Nadine at asknursenadine.com. Okay. And we'll put that in the Facebook group as well and okay. on our social media so they can get in touch with you. <coughs> um, great. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this webinar. Um, our next one will be the middle of March. We're actually going to have – March 15th. We're going to have um, some real estate investors on um, teaching you about how to invest in mobile homes. Uh, mobile home elite will be our special guest so make sure you guys tune into that and um anything else yep. thank you so much uh nadine. thank you nurse nadine we appreciate it and if any of you guys it's need uh, assistance make sure you get her one-on-one -on -one. i'm telling you it was literally priceless um and it took a lot of stress off of me it made this process so so simple um, and I, I truly, truly appreciate everything that you did for us and, and being able to jump on this um, webinar and just, you know, um, basically pour into them, just like I heard you do on the webinar when I, I watched you. And like I said to you guys, I booked the one-on-one -on -one with her before she said two words. She, matter of fact, she wasn't even on camera yet. <laughs> and that's just me. Like, I pay people for their time, their knowledge. Um, I don't want to get it just off a webinar. If I can pay you to do it for me, that's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll buy back my time. So she, like I said, she literally helped me even pass that webinar and pass our 101. Even when dealing with my broker, she was still helping me. And that 101 session of hers, I, I literally had up while talking to my broker and was like, uh, nope, that's not what I'm seeing here in front of me. Um, so... I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time, Donna. Um, thank you guys for jumping on, and we appreciate you guys. And um, we'll see you again soon. All right. Have a, Have a, good, night. Night. Have a good Sunday, guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, Nanny. Bye. -bye. Bye. Right, and then I told him. Um,